uh, here we are going to overview the cardiovascular medication in part two. First one is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. And also angiotensin two receptor blockers. So here we are going to compare and contrast in between two medication that we use for high blood pressure. So the list of drugs, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, you see the name, the drugs that end with P-R-I-L, like captopril, focinopril, enalapril, Lysinopril, Quinapril, Remipril. So most common out of all is Lysinopril, Captopril, Enalapril. So these groups of drugs block the enzyme that convert angiotensin one into angiotensin 2. Let me tell you here. So angiotensin converting enzyme, they inhibitor, they actually blockage the defense pathway of angiotensin nogen system. Let me short re recap it. Liver can produce protein is called angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen convert to angiotensin one in presence of renin, and renin release from the kidney. And angiotensin one converted to angiotensin two in presence of angiotensin converting enzyme that came from lungs or liver. And angiotensin II have a physiological roles, like they have a action over the kidney, they have a action over the smooth muscle, blood vessel, and also over adrenal cortex. Over the kidney, they constrict glomerular efferent arterioles and increase sodium and hydrogen exchange activities. Endutensin 2, when work the vascular smooth muscle and causes hypertension, and over the adrenal cortex, they also secret aldosterone. So angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors like lysinopril, captopril, or enalapril blockage this level. So they are not convert angiotensin one to angiotensin two, and angiotensin two does not participate or does not show their normal function. So they inhibit in this level and they produce the function. So now let me explain angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor how work. They block the enzyme that convert angiotensin one into the angiotensin Two. Because angiotensin 2, this one, a powerful vasoconstrictor that will increase the blood pressure. And angiotensin 2 also causes the secretion of additional blood pressure elevating hormones in adrenal glands, we call aldosterone. So our drugs block this pathway and lower the blood pressure 
lower work load of the heart, vessel artery and veins will dilate it and helps the kidney excrete sodium in water. So this angiotensin converting enzyme works like this. The other group here is called angiotensin two receptor blocker. So these groups of drugs that end with certain, like you see, SARTN, certain, like losartan, valsartan, then tell me certain, all me certain, but losartan is for valsartan frequently used medication. If you read the name blocker, so how they work? They blocks the effect of angiotensin two at the receptor site. So they also block angiotensin two. And valsartan or losartan or angiotensin two receptor blocker lower the blood pressure and workload of the heart or blood vessel, blood vessel arteries and vein will dilate it and helps the kidney to excrete out sodium in water. So little bit disc, uh, description about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor and angiotensin to receptor blockers. SCE inhibitor prevent the peripheral vasoconstriction by blocking over uh, conversion of angiotensin one to angiotensin two. And ARB means angiotensin two receptor blocker prevent the peripheral vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction prevent vasoconstriction prevent. So blood vessel get dilated. When blood vessel is dilated, blood pressure go down. Also secret aldosterone and block the bindings of angiotensin 2 to type 1 and angiotensin type 1 receptor. This medication are used to treat hypertension and heart failure. Also, angiotensin converting inhibitor are administered for their cardioprotective effect after myocardial infarction. Avoid use with potassium supplement or potassium retained diuretics. Why? So before to go the side effect, I want to tell you angiotensin converting enzyme have some contraindication. Like if patient with hyperkalemia or angioedema, it is good avoid. Also, it is good to avoid potassium supplement. It is good to avoid to use during pregnancy or breastfeeding mother. In case of angiotensin to receptor blocker, also if the patient with hyperkalemia or if the patient has a renal failure, if the patient are pregnant or breastfeeding mother is good to avoid. Also keep it note, um, if your patient need to take angiotensin to receptor blocker, like these groups of drugs, alsartin, losartin, 
is good to avoid grapes fruit juice with lucertin or alcertin. So now go here. What are the common side effect or adverse effect? So they can cause GI upset, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or persistent dry cough, particularly AC inhibitor. They can cause hypotension. So angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or angiotensin 2 receptor blocker, we used to treat hypertension or heart failure or protect your kidney function in the patient with diabetic, but they can cause hypotension. So any medication that we use for high blood pressure, they have a common side effect, hypotension, or they can cause hyperkalemia, potassium level go up, tachycardia, headache, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, hypoglycemic reaction in the client with diabetic mellitus or bruising, petechiae, bleeding or diminished taste, particularly AC inhibitors. Uh, what are the drug list we use AC inhibitor? I said, the medication end with pril, like enalapril, lysinopril, remipril, keptopril, benzapril. So some note, a persistent dry cough is a common complaint for those who are taking AC inhibitors. But this often subsides after a few weeks or instruct the client to contact with healthcare provider if this occur and persist. So what are the nursing intervention? If our patient take these two groups of drugs, it is good to monitor vital sign, monitor white blood cell count, protein, albumin, blood urea nitrogen, creatinine and potassium level. Also good to monitor for hypoglycemic reaction in the client with diabetes mellitus. If captopril is prescribed, instruct the client to take medication 20 to 60 minutes before for meal or monitor the bruising, petechia, or bleeding with captopril. Instruct the client not to discontinue medication because rebound hypertension can occur. So when time will come to stop, we will stop gradually. Instruct the client not to take over the counter medication instruct the client in how to take blood pressure, inform the client that the test of food may be diminished during the first month of therapy, or instruct the client to report adverse effect to healthcare provider. And also it is very important about these groups of drugs, the nursing implication. So when our patient take these two groups of drugs, we could monitor blood pressure, kidney function test, electrolyte and white blood cell count. And frequently ask a question in NCLEX board, the contraindication these two groups of drugs is contraindication in pregnancy. Now, 
let me talk about the medication we use for enzyme. We call anti enzymal medication. Because of enzyme or treatment of enzyme, we use vasodilator. It is called anti enzymal medication or organic nitrate or vasodilators. Anti enzymal or vasodilators relax the smooth muscle in the blood vessels. The common drugs we use called isosorbide dinitrate, isosorbide mononitrate, nitroglycerin sublingual or nitroglycerin uh, translingual, nitroglycerin nitroglycerin ointment or intravenous nitroglycerin. And some books say we, we can use also nitroposide or nitroglycerin, right? So now here, priority of nursing action. So if our patient have enzyme or if when we give the nitroglycerin, what are the procedure we have to give it? It is very important and NPLEX group frequently asks about this. The chest pain in a hospitalized client with a cardiac disease. One, quickly assessment the client speci um, specifically characteristics of pain, heart rate, rhythm, and blood pressure. The cardiac pain start left part of heart, and then it's radiate to the left shoulder, left jaw, and then radiate up to the left arm is the typical nature of cardiac pain. And then administer a nitroglycerin tablet sublingually, stay with the patient and reassess in five minutes, admin another nitroglycerin tablet sublingually if pain is not released and the blood pressure is stable. Assess in five minutes. Again, you go for assessment. Administer a third nitroglycerin tablet sublingually if pain is not released and if blood pressure is stable. Reassess in five minutes. The contact the healthcare provider if the Heart nitroglycerin tablet does not release the pain. Also, keep document the events, action taken, and the client response to treatment. So, nitroglycerin is a drug of choice. It is a cardiac drugs, and they vasodilate to reduce the preload and after load of the heart. So now, some, the usual guideline for administer nitroglycerin tablet for chest pain to a hospitalized client including, include administering one tablet every five minutes as needed. If the chest pain is there for a total dose, three tablets. And if the client does not obtain relief after taking a third dose of nitroglycerin or nitroglycerin, the healthcare provider is notified. Before administering the first dose of nitroglycerin, uh, glycerin or glycine, the nurse quickly 
assessment the line specifically characteristics of pain, the heart rate, heart rhythm, and blood pressure. The nurse always stay with the client during the events to provide reassurance and to relieve the anxiety. In addition, the nurse need to be present if the life-threatening situation develops. The nurse assessment the client before administering each subsequent dose of nitroglycerin and also pay atten a particular attention to the blood pressure because nitroglycerin can cause hypotension. The nurse needs to lower the head of the bed and contact the healthcare provider before administering another nitroglycerin if hypotension occurs. Also, agency protocol for this type of events should also be followed. The nurse documents the events, action taken, and the client responds to the treatment. Continue nitrate. Nitrate produces vasodilatation, decreases the preload and afterload, and also reduces myocardial oxygen consumption. And contraindicated in the client with a significant hypotension or increased intracranial pressure or severe anemia. And in those taking medication to treat erectile dysfunction and also should be used with fusion with severe renal or hepatic disease. Also avoid abrupt withdrawal of a long acting preparations to prevent the rebound effect of severe pain from myocardial ischemia. So when we use nitrate, some are contraindications. So we do not take nitrate with uh, sildenafil citrate, or we do not take nitrate with Viagra. A client can take one or the other, but never both as it causes severe hypotension. If we give nitro, uh, nitroglycerin sublingually, a nurse can give only up to the three tablet over the 15 minutes, right? That we learned a few minutes ago. And now the side and adverse effect can cause headache, orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, weakness, faintness, flushing or pallor, dry mouth, and reflex trachycardia. So palpitation is most common side effect, trachycardia, hypotension, headache, syncope, or diaphoresis. So sublingual medication, and in general sublingual, if we give, then it is important to monitor vital sign, offer slips of water before giving because Dryness may inhibit medication absorption. Instruct the client to place the under the tongue and leave until fully dissolved. Instruct the client not to swallow the medication. Also instruct the at-home client to take one tablet for pain and to immediately 
contact emergency medical service if pain is not relieved. Sublingual medication continue, inform the client that a burning sensation may indicate it that the tablet is fresh, if the tablet is fresh. Instruct the client to store the medication in a dark and tightly closed bottle. Instruct the client to take acetaminophen for a headache because this medication can cause headache. Translingual medication or spray. So instruct the client to di direct the spray again the oral mucosa. Instruct the client to avoid inhale the spray. Sustained release medication. Instruct the client to swallow and not to chewing or crush the medication. If we use the transdermal patch, instruct the client to apply the patch to a hairless area and using a new patch and different side each time. As prescribed, instruct the client to remove the patch after 12 to 14 hours and allowing 10 to 12 patch free hour each day to prevent the tolerance. So if we use topical ointment, what we could do? Instruct the client to remove the ointment on the skin from previous dose and also instruct the client to spread the ointment over 2.5 to 3.5 inches and area and cover with a plastic wrap and using the chest, back, abdomen, upper arm and anterior eye. Now, in case of patch and ointment, it is good to wear gloves when applying. And do not apply on the chest in the area of defibrillator or cardioverted bed placement because the skin bond can result if the bed needs to be used. And some NPLEX tips here. It is important to instruct the client using nitroglycerin tablet to check the expiration date on the medication bottle because expiration may occur within six months of obtaining the medication. And the tablet will not release the chest pain if they have expired. So let me go for the next, and it is beta adrenergic blocker, right? Or is it where beta blocker? Beta adrenergic blocker. So these groups of drugs we use to management of hypertension, management of enzyme affectoris, or congenital heart failure. Or also we can use for myocardial infarction prevention. We can use. So beta blockers, you said the end of the medication end is called OLO, right? Example are, you see, metoprolol, ethinolol. So they divided beta blockers or beta adrenergic blockers, non-selective and 
cardioselective. Non-selective blocks B1 and B2. And cardioselective blocks B1. We have only one heart. It is cardioselective. We have two lungs. They are B1 and B2 present inside the lungs and they are non-selective. So non-selective beta-1 and B2 are example levetolol, nadol, pindolol, or sotolol, and so propanolol. Selective, cardioselective one like etinolol, bisoprolol, esmolol, metoprolol, right? The so most common uh, medication we use etinolol, propanolol, nedolol, metoprolol, and carbidilol. And let me explain a little bit how they work, the mechanism of action. Beta adrenergic blockers inhibit the response to beta adrenergic stimulation does decrease the cardiac output. They block the release of catecholamines, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, thus decrease the heart rate and blood pressure. They also decrease the workload of heart and decrease the oxygen demand. Beta adrenergic blockers used for angina, used for dysrhythmias, used for hypertension, used for migraine headache, or prevention of myocardial infarction and glaucoma. As I told you, they block the epinephrine and norepinephrine from binding to beta receptor or nerves. So particularly, these groups of drugs decrease blood pressure, decrease pulse rate, and also decrease the force of contraction, but increase the contractility of heart. Beta adrenergic blockers are contraindicated in the client with asthma, bradycardia, heart failure, or severe renal or hepatic disease, hypothyroidism, or stroke. Carbidilol or metoprolol and bisoprolol have been approved for use in heart failure once the client has been st uh, stabilized by AC inhibitor and diuretics therapies. Beta adrenergic blockers should be used with, uh, with cushion in the client with diabetes mellitus because this medication may cause the marked symptom of hypoglycemia. So what does it mean? So when patients have hypoglycemia, we can see the sign and symptom of hypoglycemia. But if a diabetic patient take beta blockers, the hypoglycemia sign symptom will not be present, but patient have the hypoglycemia. It is more danger the patient who have with the sign and symptom, it is called silent killer. So beta adrenergic blockers should be used with caution in the client who taking antihypertensive medication. So if I told you what are the contraindication of beta blockers, we should hold if the heart rate less than 60 
or we do not give beta blocker if patient have a asthma or diabetics or do not use with over the counter cold medication. What are the side effects? The common side effects they can cause bradycardia, bronchospasm. So asthma patient never use it. Hypotension, weakness, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, hyperglycemia. So diabetic patient increase the blood sugar, need to adjust the sugar uh, insulin level. Can cause agrinolocytosis or behavioral or psychotic response can cause depression and nightmare. So here, so now I want to share something. These groups of drugs can cause hyperglycemia. What are the other groups of drugs can cause hyperglycemia? like steroid. Steroid also can cause hyperglycemia. Like diuretics. Diuretics can cause hyperglycemia. And what the third drugs can cause hyperglycemia? beta blocker, right? Uh, beta blocker. Beta blockers can cause the uh, hyperglycemia. So it is good tell your patient to adjust the insulin level. So if my patient take beta adrenergic blockers, what are the intervention? The common intervention, uh, we check the pulse before administration. We monitor the blood glucose in diabetic patient. Also admitting with food or trepa dose to discontinue. And easy way to remember the contraindication. So how we can remember the contraindication of beta blocker? Let me write it. So as I told you, easy way A, B, C, D, and E. A stands for asthma. So if your patient has an asthma, no beta blocker. And B stands for heart blocks. If your patient has a heart blocks, don't give beta blockers. And C for cardiac failure or congestive heart failure, congestive cardiac failure. So no beta blocker. And D for if patient has a diabetes mellitus, no beta blockers, right? And E stand for extremities. E for extremities. So if patient has occlusive arterial disease in extremities, we do not give them beta blockers. So easy way to remember. E stand for asthma and B stand for heart block. We never give the beta blockers. We monitor vital sign, withhold the medication if the pulse or BP is not within the prescribed parameters. We monitor for sign of heart failure or 
worsen the heart failure, assess the respiratory distress and for sign of wheezing and dyspnea, instruct the client to report the dizziness, light headaches and nasal congestion, instruct the client not to stop medication because rebound hypertension is more common or rebound trachycardia or chance of anginal attack occurred. What are the other adverse if, um, intervention we have to know uh, for these groups of drugs? Here, instruct the client taking insulin to monitor the blood glucose level or instruct the client how to take the pulse or blood pressure management or instruct the client to change the position slowly to prevent orthostatic hypotension. Also instruct the client to avoid over-the-counter medication, especially the cold medication and nasal decongestant. Thank you.